four verses of Psalm 84. Psalm 84. And uh, we had that opening um, verses of chapter 4 in Micah, which speaks about the, the law going forth out from Zion and the word of God from Jerusalem. And then it says, I'm just in verse 2 before that, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. And here in Psalm 84, we have um, the psalmist with a desire to be in the house of the Lord. At this time when the psalm was in his heart, he wasn't in the house of the Lord, he was somewhere else. And um, when we look at this psalm, the first thing that we are reminded of, you see, is that when this psalm was first of all inspired in the heart of the psalmist, um, he was in a battle. He, we, we, we take that from this very title that is used of the Lord of hosts. He says, How amiable or how lovely are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. And when we come across this phrase of the Lord of hosts, it speaks of him who is the captain of the Lord of hosts, such as in the revelation that came to Joshua, when he saw this appearance before him, which was none other than, um, the, I believe, the Son of God, the, circuit, the, the second person of the Trinity, and he said, are you for us or are you are for, for, for our enemies? And the, verse came, the words came back, neither neither in the sense that he was indeed the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies of Israel, the Lord over the armies of the enemies, the Lord indeed of the armies of heaven, the Lord of hosts, the all-powerful Lord who not only upholds all things in the word of his power, but has indeed everything held. Everything held. Not only in that sense of holding up the whole universe, but in complete full control of everyone on the earth. And so um, I believe that therefore this uh, enables us to have some enlightenment of the situation at present when the psalmist is waiting. He is in a battle. The Christian is always in the battle. The battle, in that sense, the battle is never, never, ne never given up. It's when we give up the battle that we become defeated. If we never give up the battle, we have the victory, not through our own strength, but through the strength. Uh, Charles Wesley puts it, through the strength that God supplies in his beloved Son. Because it is the Lord, indeed the Apostle thanks us, exhorts us to give thanks for that great final victory over death by resurrection, when that will be fulfilled in us who believe. For he says, thanks be unto God who gives to us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And every victory in every battle is given to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. And if we by his grace and the power of his spirit are triumphant, it is because of what he has done for us through the work of the cross and the witness of that 
him being raised from the dead and what he is doing at present applying in every way that it needs to be applied that victory that Christ has won and therefore the exhortation is thanks be unto God who gives to us the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ it is given to us and the psalmist is in the battle and maybe at this time there's a kind of respite not retreat in the sense of running away from the enemy and digging in somewhere else to make a stand but in the presence of the enemy taking and being afforded and taking to himself a, a time of rest a time when he is indeed truly reflecting and thinking upon the Lord his God and he never thinks upon the Lord his God without thinking of the place where he God has chosen his name to dwell in the house of the Lord but he's far from the house of the Lord and it is as if he is sitting down perhaps in a place that for a moment is quiet it's so quiet that even the very birds around are at rest and because he sees the birds around at rest he is also comforted within his own heart and soul I can only just imagine what it must be like in these days to be in the midst of a pitched battle and one can be sure of this. For example, we've been thinking this year of the centenary of the First World War and one can imagine that when that war and the battle was raging there would not have been a bird around, perhaps not any other kind of wild animal or creature fleeing out of the way but here in this place of rest he looks around and he looks up and God speaks to him something out of what he sees of God's creation and he says this look he says my soul longs yea even faints for the courts of the Lord that's where he longs to be not where he is but in the presence of God in the company of the people of God that's where he longs to be but he cannot be there at the present because at that particular time it's not the will of God for him to be there it's in the will of God for him to be in another place in a battle a battle that is not his but that is the Lord's <coughs> and in this time of quietness without he has time for quietness within my soul longs even paints that for the courts of the Lord my heart and my flesh cried out for the living God it can be summed up in another verse in another psalm where he says bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me praise his holy name it's, he's, he's, he's realizing that it is of all that is within him and he's crying out to be in that place in the shelter of God in the house of God and he looks around him he looks up you see he's beginning to be lifted up in his heart then he looks around and what does he see he sees the sparrow the sparrow hath found a house <coughs> the sparrow <coughs> a non-migratory bird has found a house a house and a house speaks of some um, 
some sort of constant dwelling place. <coughs> In thinking about this psalm and um, through a, a, another experience this day, I shall, I shall never forget one of the times that I went out um, away from home. I had to travel to a little place called Hay on Wye mm. from Swansea in South Wales. And I had to travel on Saturday to go and take some services on, on, on Sunday. And uh, I had to go Saturday because um, it would have proved um, impossible to get around that part of um, the border between England and Wales, uh, between um, what, what, what was the, well, at least three counties actually meet there, Bradnershire and uh, what was Bre Brecknock, Brecknockshire and Herefordshire. And um, <coughs> I think of that journey. I went on Saturday, getting on a bus to go to Brecon to change and get to get another bus and wondering if um, the bus would really get through. It was a very, very, it was in February and very much snow on the ground. And um, as we got to a place that was a sort of a, the last stop for the bus to the driver to decide whether he's going or not. Uh, there was an ambulance going up before the bus, and the ambulance began to climb out of the Swansea Valley over what we would call the bulk, the gap between the uh, two mountains uh, on each side. And the ambulance was going, and the bus driver decided to go. And when we got there, we found that it was it, it was the first bus on that route that had got through that week. And he went up because the ambulance was going up. The ambulance might have had chains on the wheels or whatever, and been fit for the journey. But the driver went, and the bus got through. And then eventually, I arrived in in Heon Bay. And of course, I had to stay Saturday night. We stayed, and I stayed in the home of a very dear saint. And of course, the first thing in the morning was, did you sleep well last night? And I did sleep well, but I did tell her. Oh, I said, um, I was awoken at some time with some scratching. I wasn't afraid of mice or of anything like that, but some, something scratching, something disturbed me. And she said, oh, she said, that would be the sparrow, she said. And she had a little cottage, incidentally, <laughs> uh, oh, about four or five years after, it was 1958, in 1960, uh, my, my dear wife had come to the Lord in that very place, incidentally. But the thing was this, you see, the walls of that cottage were about two foot six thick, two foot at least, let's not exaggerate, two foot at least. But I tell you what, the sparrow was only two inches the other side, I, two inches, perhaps nearer than two inches the other side of the wallpaper. Mm. And what had happened to the sparrow? He'd found a house. And in this sense, mm. she's found a house. Finding a place, a gap in between out stones on the outside uh, of the course of stonework and through whatever was filled in between and just gone in as far as she could and she went in as far as she could because that was the warmest place to be it was the safest place to be and you see I, I believe this you know that for the sparrow that was God's provision for her place of refuge, a place of safety. And in the battle God has provided for us a place of refuge and a place of safety. And we are exhorted and encouraged and drawn in every way to go in as deep as ever we can in our trust in the Lord, to trust in him to keep us safe in the battle. And he looks up and he sees that the sparrow has found a house. And then there's the migratory bird, the swallow. The swallow has found a house, a, play, a nest for herself. 